back to our rocks or pebbles again, how many rocks would you need in order to build a square? We can build a square with four rocks, or nine rocks, or even just one rock. Each of these numbers in the green arrow on the left is a perfect square because if I take that number of rocks, I'm able to build a square out of it. I'll have equal number of rocks on both the base as well as the height. Each of these numbers on the right is a perfect cube because if I take that number of rocks, I'm able to build a cube out of them. I'll have, if I take eight rocks, I can build a cube with two rocks along the length, two rocks along the width, and two rocks along the height. Some numbers, such as 64, 1, are both perfect squares and perfect cubes. The square root of a number is a number that when we multiply that number by itself, we get that original value. The cube root of a number is a number that when we take that number and multiply it by itself three times, we get that original value back. And you can think about this geometrically as well. So we know area of a square is just the side length squared. So if I take the side length, square it, I'm going to get 49. That's the original value we took the square root of. We know that to find the volume of a cube, we take the side length and cube it. So here, if we go eight times eight times eight, we will get that original value of 512. You can use your calculator to determine whether or not a number is a perfect square or a perfect cube or neither. So the square root button is on top of the squared button. So in order to get that button, we're going to go second function and then we're going to press that squared button. There's the square root. And then if we type in the first number, 1331, we're looking for a whole number. So because this number is irrational, that is not a perfect square. To get to the cube root button, we're gonna go into math. So right under the alphabet key is the math key. We can see that number four is your cubed root. So we're gonna press number four and then, then enter that 1,331. And that is a whole number. So we know that this is a perfect cube. And then you can even try this out. If we go 11, and then this is your exponent key right above the divide sign. So to the power of three, that does give us back that 1,331. So now let's check out 625. So again, we're gonna go second function and then squared to get to the square root and we can enter 625. Now, if you need to get out of that radical sign, what you're gonna do is right arrow and then it's gonna take you out. If you're using a TI-83 calculator, then you're gonna close the bracket. So again, we're looking for that whole number. So we know that 625 is a perfect square. And then let's go into the math menu. We're gonna go down to number four. Let's try 625 and that's irrational. So 625 is not a perfect cube, but it is a perfect square. 15,625 we can see is both a perfect square and a perfect cube. Both of those are whole numbers. And 1,728 is going to be a perfect cube. And then I'm just gonna show you, if you're taking, for example, the fourth root of something, what you're gonna do is enter the value of that index, so in this case, four, and then go into math. And you can see that option number five allows us to put any number in the place of that variable. So we're going to choose number five and you're going to see it's going to put it up in the place of the four and then we can choose for example any number in here and so the fourth root of 16 is two. Two times two times two times two or two to the power of four is 16. So this index is the number of times I'm multiplying this value by itself in order to get that radicand in the radical. Evaluate means to find the numerical value. So we can just enter the square root of 196 into the calculator. It is a perfect square, we'll get a value of 14. Now we could also enter this into the calculator, but there's a faster way of doing this. If you know your perfect squares, we can see that 49 is a perfect square, as is 16. So by dividing that product up into its perfect squares, we know the square root of 49 is seven, we know the square root of 16 is four. We're multiplying them together, we know that four times seven is 28. So that's the value. Same thing in this next one. We know already that 64 is a perfect square. So the square root of 64 is 8. And then we have 12 on the denominator. We can reduce this. We know 8 divided by 4 is 2. We know 12 divided by 4 is 3. And similarly, we know that 81 is also a perfect square. The square root of 81 is 9. And then 18 divided by 9 gives us a value of 2. 
If you see a fraction underneath the radical, you can actually write it as just the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So you can break it into two separate pieces. We already established up here that the square root of 64 is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. So down here, what times itself gets us back to x squared? And you can see that the square root of x squared is x. A square root essentially cancels out a squared. So the square root of 64 x squared is just 8x. The square root of 196, that's also a perfect square, it is 14. Both 8 and 14 are divisible by 2, so 8 divided by 2 is 4. We still have an x in the numerator. 14 divided by 2 is 7. You can enter the cubed root of 1728 into your calculator. It is a perfect cube, so we'll get a value of 12. And then again, both of these are perfect cubes. So we know that the cubed root of 64 is 4, the cubed root of 125 is 5. So then we can multiply those together and we end up with a value of 20. This denominator, again, you can enter that into your calculator. It is a perfect cube. Both the numerator and denominator are divisible by 5, so we always want to reduce our fractions. So we get a value of 3 fifths and no decimals, so you want to leave it as a fraction. And then this fraction within the radicand, we can also break that up into the numerator and the denominator. So the cubed root of 8 is 2, the cubed root of 343 is 7, and that is a reduced answer. There's no number other than 1 that we can divide into the numerator and denominator, and dividing by 1 won't change the value. Two things in conclusion. Number one, you want to know your perfect squares and your perfect cubes. There were very few examples on the previous page where I needed to use my calculator. The more familiar you are with these numbers, the quicker you're going to be able to do operations involving those squares and cubes. The second thing that's interesting is if you begin at one and add the next odd number to it, you get four. If you add the next odd number, you get nine. If you add the next odd number, you get 16, and this pattern will continue all the way to infinity. One rock, three rocks, five rocks, seven rocks. So you can see that each time those odd numbers are creating this L-shaped pattern, which is giving us a square of four, a square of nine, a square of 16, and so on. we also have triangular numbers. One is the first one, then three, then six. What would the next one be?